Hey, 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 family, it's your girl Evelyn here, and I'm back with another video, and I think I'm only going to do maybe this and one or two other videos talking about femininity. I know that uh, several people have, um, you know, asked me to kind of expand on my feminine journey, but as I have said multiple times, I am not a femininity teacher. I am a femininity student. Uh, I am a woman who is fascinated with the topic. Um, but I will always refer to you, uh, the people and the resources that have helped me on my femininity journey. So like, um, I did a video, um, sometime last year about the people and the books that have helped me on um, my femininity journey. I will always have the links to the books in my description box. So you can check those out, um, if you want to. But today I kind of wanted to do something that, um, like I just kind of wanted to do like a chatty Kathy video where I just want to share with you, like some of the things that I have learned on my femininity journey. And I, I, I wrote them down. I think I only have like six things here, but who knows as I get to talking and like more things may come out. And I kind of want to know, like, you know, I want you to share your journey with me, like not as me as your teacher. Like I said, there, there are women, um, in the femininity space who I feel are genuine, who I feel like are really good at what they do, who I feel like this is their life's work. They're not hopping on it because, you know, it's the new buzzword, you know, um, you know, they've been at this work for years and, um, I will always, 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 I know I say that it, it, you know, in these few videos that I've done, but I like, I really believe that I think it's important to know what your lane is and what it's not. And that oh, I can be enthusiastic about a subject. I can be passionate about a subject, but I don't have to be the teacher of the subject, right? Like you have to know what your wheelhouse is. So today I want to share with you kind of, um, whatever the title says right now I have six, I'm going to say six things that I have learned on my femininity journey. And so the first one, and I think I mentioned this briefly in another video is that femininity is not what you do, right? Um, femininity is a way of being. And I remember watching a video by life coach Sean, who I've talked about before, love her, I've been following for her for years, right? And I, I won't say that she deems herself as a femininity coach or expert, you know, she's a life and dating coach. But if you listen to her advice, if you, if you, if you watch her videos, if you just kind of look at, you know, the parts of her life that she shares with us, her femininity is very evident. Um, but one of the things she said in a video, and I don't even think it was related to femininity, but she, she started off a video by saying, there's more than one way to be a woman. And I remember thinking that that was such a powerful statement. And I, what I realized is that there is, right? And I think what's interesting about like the femininity conversation is that we haven't acknowledged there's more than one way to be a woman. And notice I didn't say there's one more than one way to do, like, right? Like, so, because femininity is a way of being. And what I realized is that um, I prefer my approach to womanhood to be the feminine way, right? Some, some women do not want to approach womanhood in that way. Some women want something a little bit more, let's just say not feminine, if you will. Right. And, and I, and I don't want to issue judgment on that, right? Like that, that is their choice that I, I saw the fruits of femininity. I saw women who exuded femininity and some of the things that I had been struggling with when I wasn't fully in tune and fully embracing my femininity, I saw that they didn't have those issues, right? And upon further digging and learning and all of that kind of stuff, I found out like that this was why, right? Like, and I'm not saying that women who don't choose the femininity approach to life, right? Um, have these issues or, or, and I'm also not saying that every woman who claims to be feminine doesn't have these issues, but this is, you know, based on my sample size and what I've seen and observed and witnessed firsthand and through my own experiences, that's kind of what I wanted. You know, like I didn't want to be at war with men, right? Like I, so I've never been team men are trash. I've never been the team men are dogs. I've never been the team ain't no good men. I've never been team, 
you know, oh, they don't like us. I've never been team, whatever. Because I feel like you get what you focus on, right? Um, you know, I, I, I did that, like that's just never been my viewpoint. Um, I would tell you several years ago, I was in Austin working on a project and I was out to, I was out with um, another YouTuber and one of her friends, right? And one of her friends um, made the statement, which I thought was very, very vulnerable of her. Like, she was like, you know, well, black men have hurt me um, more than anybody. And I was like, that's interesting because I feel like black men have loved me, loved me more than anybody, right? And so, and so, and so because of that, she had decided that not only did she not want to date uh, black men anymore and that she wanted to date um, men of other races, which, hey, do you, you know, do what you do, love who you love, right? Um, but she also didn't want to date men anymore. And I remember thinking like, wow, like, is, did you prefer to date black men? And you just had this experience. And so what I realized um, for me is that, you know, a lot of messaging that I had been receiving or expo allowing myself to be exposed to, let me say that, um, was I, like you were at war with men. It was always something wrong with men. They, it was always something they weren't doing. It was always their fault. Yeah, so one of the so one of the first things that I've learned in my journey is that femininity is is not a to do list. Um, you know, it's not a set of actions that you do. It it is a way to approach life, right? And um, I, you know, I think when I started to see people who I would describe as having you know a healthy feminine side um i saw that they just had a certain level of ease and grace and flow that i wanted in my own life and so i saw that femininity wasn't like if you do these things this will make you feminine it was more like if you approach life this way you will have ease and grace and flow and not that obviously like okay um, that, you know, you won't have regular like life hardships, but it's, it's a way of being not a way of doing. And, and I've said this before. I think that's why I've shied away from people who try to give you like a femininity checklist. Like, <laughs> uh, if you do this, this will make you feminine. It's like, you know, it's way more complex and nuanced than that. Um, and listen, if, if that, if, the, if they feel that that's what's working for them, um, more power to them. Okay. But that wasn't going to work for me. Uh, which leads me to my, um, next point. And I got this from Yaya Smith. Um, and like I said, I like to give credit to all the ladies where credit is due is one of the things that she says all the time is that femininity is not a box. It's a blueprint. And, you know, I definitely learned that, that there is, there is, it's a blueprint. It's kind of like, you know, there's general blueprints for building a house. You've got to have foundation and studs and walls and electrical and wiring and heating and cooling and gas and all that, right? But with that blueprint, you can have so many variations of houses and styles and structures and things like that, right? But if it's a box, then it's saying it's one size fits all. And if you don't fit in this box, then you, in fact, are not a feminine woman. And I... I, I never really subscribed to that. And, and listen, I don't think that there are people who are out here um, intentionally trying, trying to put people in a box. But I definitely think that, you know, I think that there are people who really want people to experience, um, you know, the benefits of approaching life from a feminine way, from having a, 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 a healthy feminine side, but maybe don't know how to distill it down because it, it is so interesting and layered and things like that right that you know i don't think that one youtube video or uh you know an hour-long master class can really like get into the depths i think there's you know a lot of you know um reflecting and undigging and uncovering and exploring to do when it comes to the subject but definitely i learned that femininity is not a box it's a blueprint so you know, when I think about life, life coach Sean talking about that there's more than one way to be a woman, they're just operating off of a different blueprint, right? And so, like, I thought about doing a video. Listen, and I don't even, am I going to say this? I'm not, I, mm, I'm going to say it because I'm not going to do this video. Like, I actually have the note card written out here about doing the video. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do that video because I don't want the trolls, right? But I, I was going to talk about why I lean more towards femininity 
and less towards feminist um, in the modern context, right? And I was going to go into the definitions of, of feminist because here's the thing. I think feminine women are all about women's empowerment. Absolutely. I definitely feel that, and this kind of leads me into my next point, was that um, femininity is not at war with masculinity. Femininity is in harmony with the masculine, right? Um, and that, I mean, and, and specifically I'm talking about women and men, but also like even in yourself that you can't have healthy a healthy feminine side and an unhealthy masculine side, which is I had that at one point and realized like, oh, I've spent all this time, you know, trying to uh, reestablish or heal, if you will, my femininity, that now I'm at a place where I feel like my femininity isn't really a place, but, you know, I was at a place where it's like, oh, girl, but your masculine needs some support, right? And and so um, I needed people who would talk about the importance of healthy masculine and how healthy masculine is into support of the feminine and not in, like, not in conflict with the feminine. And so when I say that, so I am not saying that um, all, you know, the, that that's what the feminist movement is about or that's what all feminists about, because I actually don't believe that. I truly believe that the women who have embraced the, the feminist uh, mantra are just like, listen, we are valuable. We can do what we want to do, X, Y, Z. And I support those thoughts. What I do think is that a small portion of that community or, or, or at least a loud enough portion of that community has made it seem like it's women against men. And um, I, I, that's the part that I, I, I don't buy into because, you know, I just believe in the harmony of the two and that when a woman is healthy in her femininity and healthy in her masculinity and when a man is healthy in his masculinity and healthy in his femininity, there's no more beautiful balance than that, right? Um, there's no more perfect harmony than that. And so whether that is in friendship, whether that's in a romantic relationship, whether that is in parents and children's and siblings, right? That the feminine and the masculine being in harmony, they, that they support one another. And that's one of the things that I really learned along the way. And so I, I didn't really ever jump into the camp of them being opposing forces, if you will. So that's another thing. So I've talked about, okay, femininity is a way of being, not something that you do, right? Um, shout out to Life Coach Sean about that there's more than one way to be a woman. That femininity is a blueprint, not a box. Shout out to Yaya Smith on that one. Um, you know, femininity is about being in harmony with the mas with masculinity and not at being at odds with it. So that's important. Um, I will say with that, and I think I kind of mesh these two points together, is that you could be working on your femininity and have an unhealthy masculine. Like, so, like, I will say this. I think one of the general consistence that, consensus that a lot of people can agree with in this whole, you know, femininity journey dialogue is that, oh, these women were overly masculine. And I think the, the more accurate description should be is that they were over-functioning in an unhealthy masculine right? Um, because healthy masculine, you need women, we need healthy masculine, even in our own selves, externally and internally, right? Externally from other people, but also with us, same with femininity, right? And I think when people say like, oh, this person was overly masculine or they were overly this or they're, they're masculine. I think what they're really trying to say is they had an unhealthy masculine, which is unattractive in a man, unattractive in a man or a woman. If you got an unhealthy masculine as a woman and an unhealthy masculine as a man, either way, I, eh, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I, I get too hyped. But yeah, um, definitely like learned like that you can't ignore one without the other. And okay, let me give you an example. It's like a visual in my head, right? Like think about the people, like you ever see those men that go to the gym, but they only work their upper body. So they get these nice big buff upper bodies, but they legs look like toothpicks and they look like they are gonna topple over at any second. It just, it just looks out of whack, right? It just, it's, it's kind of like, Oh, that don't go like that. Don't, that don't, that's not appetizing. That's not appealing. That's what it looks like to be out of balance or have an unhealthy masculine or femininity in, in whatever proportion. Right. And so I really, you know, learned in my journey that to not ignore uh, making sure that my masculine side was healthy uh, along with my feminine side. And I, I, that's not a lot that I've seen be a part of the conversation um, 
outside of the women that I've talked to, I mean, that I've talked about before, right? But that like, and that the masculine is in service to the feminine, right? Like that you have to have that masculine in intact in yourself externally whatever and that allows so a healthy masculine allows a healthy feminine to flourish i mean it's a it's a beautiful dance it's a beautiful dance um and I, so i think that leads me to my last point is that when i started healing my masculinity it enhanced my healed femininity like and i know it like if you're new to this subject you're probably like this sounds so woo woo because <laughs> I was the same way. I was like, give it to me in like step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, do this. And I realized it is just not that linear. It's not that concrete. It's not that black and white, which I think is what makes it so beautiful, but also so complex and layered and flavored and important, right? And so, um, you know, I want you to think that as you go and you, you know, you listen to who you like to listen to, whether it be on YouTube or podcasts or whoever, um, as your femininity coaches and teachers and gurus, if you will, that is not me. That's not me. That's not me. I'm gonna say it again. That's not me. Um, that, you know, just think about like, I really want you to listen to the messaging and make sure that it aligns with where you want to go. Like, I, I really don't think women want to be at war with men. I really don't think that, um, you know, the sexes want to be at war, right? But somehow that is where I feel like our culture is going or has been. And I, you know, I don't think either side wants that, but I don't think they know how to undo that. And the thing is, is I think, you know, one of the things I, I learned is that men and women are both equally value, valuable, but we different in function, right? And so, um, you know, and I will say this, you know, as a Christian, I definitely believe the scriptures when it says that, you know, um, that we are the favorite factor. I remember Ashley Empowers, um, as someone who I've mentioned before, who, who speaks on femininity, but from like dating and marriage perspective, um, she had did like a webinar. Oh, I think at this point, a couple of years ago called the favor factor. And she was talking about like, we're the favor conduit. And it's like, yes. Right. Like when you think about the scripture that he, that find the wife find a good thing. And again, like I said, it's not just about dating and marriage, but obviously that's what she specializes in. And she really broke that thing down. And she was like, you're the favor factor. And so once you understand that, you know, men have things about them that are so unique to them, so wonderful to them, so beneficial to us about them, that's completely different than who we are. But we also have things that are very unique to us and wonderful and magnificent and beneficial to ourselves and also beneficial to the collective. You know, I think that, um, that, that we'll start to see um, uh, how valuable each of us are to each other. Like, yes, as freestanding, you know, I'm valuable to myself, right? Like my femininity, I, I didn't work on my femininity for it to solely be in purpose to someone else, but that is, is valuable to me first. And then also valuable to anyone I'm surrounded with, regardless of the nature of the relationship. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I think that, you know, I really would love to see reconciliation from that standpoint. I think that if we can really see that, that, that we are um, equal in value, but we are gifted differently in function and what we bring to the table. And because, and, and because here's the thing, I heard a quote once and I'm probably going to butcher the quote and I wish I could quote where this came from. But um, it basically said that some women can't say most, can't say all, but some right uh, women believe that men are just big hairy misbehaving women <laughs> and I was like you know there was a season in my life where I think I was guilty of that and so because I thought that they were just bigger hairier misbehaving women I I they could they could do no right when the reality was they're not women they're men uh, and so the way they think and the way they function and the way they operate and the and what they view as a priority and how they solve problems and things like that is going to be completely different than the way we'd approach it. But just because it's different doesn't mean it's less valuable, right? And that, you know, two things can be true at the same time, that they can be valuable and we can be valuable 
at the same time, but just the way we're valuable is different. So anyway, I went down a whole little tangent there, but that's, you know, um, some things that I have learned along my femininity journey. I would love to know if you are on a femininity journey, what are some things that you have learned that have surprised you or that have been really beneficial to towards you i would love to know in the comments below like i want this to be more of a dialogue like i said i may do one or two more videos and then i think i'm going to kind of be done with this subject um but i definitely you know people kind of ask me more about my journey and so i i wanted to share about my journey and i'm definitely telling you this like years post my journey like obviously i think it's a continuation if it's if it's an area that needed support and healing and all that kind of stuff but i'm I'm not telling you while I'm in the middle of it, I'm telling you like that I'm on the other side of some things and kind of thinking retroactively things that I've learned, things that I've experienced, things that I, you know, wish I would have done differently. And so that's just a few things that I have learned along the way on my journey. All of the books and the ladies that I talk about when it comes to femininity will be in the description box of this video. Like I said, let me know what has been helpful to you along the way and I will see you in my next video. Peace.